In FeatureCam 2014 R3, you can now quickly see exactly which variables are configured for a particular post processor and understand their intended use. This has been enabled with the addition of string names for the post processor variables. The main benefits include quick navigation of post processor variables as string names are displayed and listed at the top. Also post processor writing is made much quicker as variables with string names automatically get updated in the formats they exist in. In this example you can see I've got a mold plate component and I'm using a FANUC 0M post processor. This post processor can actually be accessed via this folder like so. If I go ahead and play my machining sequence, you can see all the features that I've already pre-created. And if we look at the NC code, we get this displayed like so. At the very beginning of the program, in the program start format, you can see I've got a number of extra elements that allow me to define something particular about this machining process. In this case, I've got the program issue, component part number, component description, and programmed by. Each one of these parameters in this case is going to be controlled by a post processor variable. However, trying to decide which one is which uh, has been quite difficult in the past because these are just simply number names. In this case, what I want to do is I want to populate uh, some of these fields with some useful information. So how do I do this? Well, the first thing I need to do is I need to go to my feature and I can do any of these features. I'm going to use the face feature. I'm going to go to my operations finishing tab, go to the milling and look at the post variables. Here you can see I've got variables from P1 to P100 and in this case it's one of these parameters that I need to fill in for each one of these stages. However there's no indication as to which one I need to fill in so what I need to do is check the post processor. I do this by simply going to the post and saying edit. That opens our post processor dialog and we can go and have a look at the format, in this case the program start format. Here you can see the post processor variables that I wish to use. In this case program issues P43 all the way down to program by which is P46. However if I forget these numbers it's quite easy to make a mistake. For example, if I go to my face feature into the finishing tab, into the milling, under post variables. Let's say I go and choose P43 and I get confused and think this is program by. Put my initials in like so. Play through my machining sequence. Look at my NC code and here I've got program issue and I've put my initials into here by mistake. So clearly we want some easier way to define each one of these elements. In this case we can do this with this new string item. Each one of the post processor variables has a new post processor variable name which can be accessed via the CNC info menu. In this case I can scroll through each one of the post processor variables and then choose to give it a visible name. So in this case I'm going to select P43 I'm going to copy that program issue name and under P43 I'm going to make sure that this has that program issue name like so. Say OK and accept that. If I go back to my post process variable names and look down the list you can see po program issue is now entered into P43. So I can continue this process. I'm going to go ahead and copy component part number into my variable names scroll down to P44 paste that in and say OK grab component description copy that into my variable names paste that in and the final one which is program by copy that put that into my final slot in P46. I'm now going to save this post processor so I'm going to say save as. I'm going to overwrite the one that says post variables and say save. I can now go ahead and test this 
and you see the post processor looks the same, the only thing that's changed is the time. However, by making that change to the post processor, if I go to my variables area now, what you'll see is those string names have basically been populated and filled and moved to the top of the list. If we scroll down, you'll see there is a gap where the P43 to 46 variables were contained, and those have been moved to the top with those string names. I can now clearly see the mistake I've made by putting my initials into the program, program issue. Let's go ahead and cut that out, put that into the program by, and then we can go in and fill in the rest of the parameters as well. So let's select program issue, make this number one, component part number, give it a number, component description, I'll call this one mold plate. Say OK, apply, I click, OK, go and replay through our sequence. Check our NC code and you can see our parameters have been populated like so. In addition to this, it also makes it easier to make mass changes to our post processor because those string variable names, if we go and look at the post variable names, so each one of these uh, replaces the original number in our program sequence in the formats. If we were to go into our format, program start, you can see here program issue, for example, has that program issue pvar as the new variable. What this means is I can update this program issue variable string name uh, under the CNC info menu and this will automatically update that particular variable regardless of where it is within my NC code. So for example let's just make this full word, we'll call this program issue, say OK, go back to my program start and you'll notice that it automatically updates that variable and will populate that variable throughout the post processor no matter where it is. This makes the process of updating the post much, much quicker because we don't need to worry about changing each of those variable numbers uh, with the new string name.